Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attacker Productions. Today I'm Bankrupt, you're joined again by Jake, Nick, and like always, Fluff. What's going on, y'all? Howdy, howdy. What's up, beautiful people? My brain wanted to say Jimmy because of routine. <laughs> and I had to freeze. I'm like, no, it's Jake. T today's matchup is uh, Fluff versus Nick. Fluff has brought back Sin Shinron because I messed up his Jim and Mill deck. And Nick has brought back Helku. Um, like I was just buttons down below, feel free to click up the death reason, but let's get into today's matchup. Nick, last time we saw Helku, uh, we had a profile on it. I think that was before s the, this previous set, or this current set. What have, you, what have you done to change the deck real quick? Or have you done nothing to it? Uh, there was one change. Um, the only thing major that I did was I swapped out Vegeta's Final Flash. I put that in the sideboard, and then I put in, um, Realm of Gods Black Kamehameha. Um, and the, the reason behind that, um, I like the board control a little more than blanking skills. And I have final flash in the sideboard just in case it comes up. Cause this was a best of one sideboard. Um, so in, depending on the matchup, if it's more pertinent to where there is a big battle card swinging at me, it makes more sense. But in this case, I just like the generic board control on defense. Yeah, depending on how your deck functions, Final Flash can either be kind of dead or really good against Sin Shinron. It just depends on what else your deck is capable of doing. Yeah, and my, my battle cards have a lot of inherent removal. Um, you'll see it pretty much throughout this game. Um, I have a lot of ways to pop stuff, so I don't really care about blanking skills per se. Um, just because I can get rid of cards before they actually become a problem. Yeah, I wasn't sure how this match was going to shake out. Because um, we both have aggro in our own particular way, and we both have field control in our own particular way. So this is a lot like the Vegeta Trunks match. But Helku is a lot more aggressive in my testing. So I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Yeah. And what I will say is, for Helku, um, I try to keep the engine a little bit small. Um, I think I only run, um, as far as the flipping battle cards go, I run the Double Strike Goku and the Blocker Goku, which are the only real ones you need. Um, and then the Unison, of course, which is necessary for the whole thing to work. And then I run four copies of the extra card, the Trip to Hell. Um, it's kind of rough if you don't see that card, um, turn one and turn two. Because um, turn two is when you can actually do your alternate Awaken um, by doing a Trip to Hell. Um, so without seeing that card, it's I'm kind of floundering. Um, as you see, I wasn't able to play it initially. So I, I'm kind of digging at this point. I'm searching my deck. I can see the top three, um, but I'm really looking for the extra card right now. That's it. This is just an interesting interaction I'm noticing. I think part of the reason Sin Shinron has been as good as it is for as long as it has been is that a lot of other yellow decks have a failure point where if you don't see a particular card at a particular window, it kind of throws a little bit of a wrench into your game plan where Sin can play for early, it can play for late, its leader swing fixes the problem of not drawing what you need to draw because you get a, a wider view and selection of what you would like to grab. So, uh... Overall, I think it's just still positioned really well as a yellow deck, especially against against other yellow decks. It also has a really good recovery rate as well. But yeah, correct me. Yeah, if you're correct me fluff on this one. The one star ball is it is it drop or hand or deck? Uh, hand or deck. So once you get those four drops in your drop area, it's they're kind of unfortunately shut out. But sin, as we've seen before in the past has good ways just putting out big battle cards for fairly cheap and with other resources. Yeah. And it those big battle cards are oftentimes they are they're smoke and mirrors. Like people will focus really hard on getting that nine drop off the field or they'll focus really hard on getting the eight drop or the nova off the field as opposed to just going for the leader. Um, I don't run a ton of negates in this, so it's a lot of the times, you know, if the if the opponent decides to go really heavy into my leader, sometimes I kind of flounder. And but you'll you'll kind of notice in a lot of matches, people really focus on those larger cards 
as opposed to just striking the leader. And I'm not going to say uh, Fluff got lucky on Nick's turn that time because, like Nick said earlier, you're not seeing Trip to Hell, which could have helped you just awaken, and that way you could have swung with leader did. Yeah, well, and he did hit me with the four drop, so I wasn't. So he called leader, so I wasn't able to swing with it to get my inherent draw anyway. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. It's but not, yeah, I, it's not locked to the one ahead. side. I forgot about that. I always forget about that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so as of, as of right now, I played the real. I played it really weird. I tapped three for that Goku, um, which is normally one of the cards you want to reveal and play to get your awaken. Um, but I needed I needed the draw. Um, I needed to fix my hand a little bit and. Um, the blocker is really nice, so I don't really have to worry about the big the big 30k swing at this point. Yeah, I was wondering why you tapped out and then left it in active mode, but hearing you explain like what's going on with your game state, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It was actually a really good play. It provided him a little bit of protection against what could have otherwise been a really pushy turn. Um, I unfortunately it was kind of a feels bad moment. I didn't have a target from Nova, so I had to just play the Nova, swing with it, and then use the Omega to pop the Nova. Um, I charged my one target that I've seen the entire game on turn one, I believe. The nature on. The nature on, which yeah. is kind of like your your own unique combo where the one um, negates the other one taps. Yeah. Which would have been yeah. really handy to see those. Um, but I just haven't drawn. Yeah, now that I'm awakened, I can actually use my leader's activate main to do the spirit boost so I can do the uh, revealing so I can play my battle cards. Um, once you're awakened, you're pretty good um, at that point. So it was just struggling at the first point i was kind of floundering but now that i'm consistently with my unison and stuff it's no problem at all yeah that's always the the pivotal moment in a match against sin is like when you stabilize and how complete your stabilization is you know can really swing the game one way or another like He's already beat you down. I mean, you've taken some of your own life, but you're looks like you're at three at this point to his five. Mm -hmm. So somebody passing by the table just might think that the sin player is in complete control here, but this is the stage of the game where you're going to get to start popping off and cracking back a little bit. Yeah. And that's exactly what starts to happen. Um, as soon as he starts resolving his trips to hell, and and everything else like he used the the secret rare to tap the ball um yeah i use the secret rare to negate its skills so now to it's negate, interactive to negate its skills yeah yeah um, and i was able to, and he did give the omega barrier from the oceanus but i was able to take it with the secret rare still yeah so no I've lost, yeah so i've lost all of that momentum that I had moving forward, and now it's just a matter of, can I build it back? Yeah, this was a big uh, fuck-up for me. <laughs> Wait, what happened uh, there? Trip, uh, <laughs> I forgot to fix my my drift my deck in the right way. I was like, okay, because it's, it's really easy to do. Um, so I did the just reveal and flip, um, but I should I should have tapped so I could fix it, so I could put one on top, but Live and learn, right? Yeah. Getting to interact with this ball is really strong. Oh, that was nice. Comboing with the Oceanus to restand it, because even though its skills are negated, it's still a Shadow Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. That True. was, you know, losing that ball would have been enormous. And. and now I have to consider, is it worth me going back up into the 9-drop for him to just, you know, hit another Goku and pop the 9-drop again? And I ultimately believe the answer to that is just yes. 
Yeah, uh, at least if you go into the four, you can lock the leader down and alleviate some pressure. So even if he can't go all the way up into the nine, playing off of this ball and spending resources to make sure it survived, I think, was an overall the correct move. Because I could, you know, I, I think I have a Mecha Kubora in hand. I could Mecha Kubora and take his Goku and leave myself tapped out with the Me with the Goku coming out. Um, but then we start seeing robotic repasts here. So I'm not going to be able to be as aggressive as I would want to be going into this turn. Do you restand an energy on Awaken? One energy, yeah. Oh, that's rough. It's a hybrid, I think, right? Uh, it's draw two, restand one. Oh, yeah, because you got a three life or units in the trick. Yeah. yeah. We haven't had leaders like that in a while where they awaken at weird points in time. I think Sin is one of the few that has hung around as well. Like, its awaken is different, but not so clunky that it's unplayable. Yeah. I mean, there's the Beerus Chompa, but they start with flow life naturally. True. Yeah, and one of the things I was kicking myself about is I had that poutine in hand for the entire game, <laughs> and I had multiple opportunities to proc it off, but I just never did. <laughs> uh, but now that it's on the board, like it's going to provide a ton of value because pretty much how he plays the game is through skills, so poutine's going to proc regardless. So, Fluff, what's your thought going into this turn? You're looking at a double striker, two Frieza's, a leader swing... Um, you've got I one feel, open and you can awaken. I feel really safe. Um, I don't feel like he's going to be able to kill me. My goal is to just try to get him to spend energy. Get himself near tapped out before I move through. But I'm not going to be able to take a ton of pressure here. I have a gigantic hand at this point. I think I'm sitting on like 13 to 14 cards. But oh, wow. he has a he has a gigantic field now. Yeah. So at my at this point, like I, I know he would have some type of floodgate in hand, um, but the best option is just to push through because I only spent two energy. So three open energy for defense on yellow is huge. So I I wasn't worried just to push my battle cards right now and just let it ride. It's, see what he can do, especially if you had a cooler at that moment. Like, and if you feel like you could go for game this turn, if he tapped out for yeah. the gate, that would have been rough. Even just leaving the three up is enough to make your opponent think about Cooler and uh, consider what they're doing very carefully and maybe let you into a battle phase that they otherwise wouldn't. I decided to take that attack. Um, I could have comboed out of it, but I decided to take it because I wanted to awaken the next turn and I wanted options to play through. He's sitting on three open energy, so I know he's going to be defensive. Yeah, and then he just immediately drops another robotic repost and I'm like, shit. Yeah, it's smart in this case because he can go for the unison, which is fine. Um, he can tap four. I don't mind him doing that. Um, but if he wants to be pressure by going wide, he'll have to spend extra of his resources. My my options are really limited to going into the Mega Kabor Unison um, or putting out the Omega Shinron and trying to triple strike and out combo him. But I'm afraid of Vegeta's Final Flash. Especially with two up in yellow. Yeah. And would the triple strike do anything about his blocker on board right now? Uh, no. So, like, he still has that extra protection from there right now as yeah. well. He still has that blocker, so... And, and Poutine, so you'd have so you'd have to work around the Poutine before going well, in. Poutine already got triggered when you removed the 9, and he played the ball. Well, but this is a new turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is a new turn. My bad. Um, this is kind of an arcane rules thing, but can you pick the ball repeatedly for Mecha Frieza, and since it can't be affected by skills you can't switch it 
or is it unselectable no, in that it's case? It's unselectable. Ah, okay. It Much like used a barrier to be, card. It used to be, and then they changed the rules on it. Uh, I think that I think that makes sense. Just treat it the same way you would treat a battle card with barrier. Yeah, there was a card back in the day, I remember, like, it wasn't Android 13, but it was something. You're like, all right, I'll just use the ball. And it's like, that's stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it there it was a thing back in the day, and then they ended up clarifying the rules that you couldn't, because the card doesn't say that it can't be selected. It says it's unaffected by, but cards that are unaffected are no longer applicable targets for targeting effects. No longer selectable. That makes sense overall. I think so. This is an interesting choice. Um, two life tapping out but you do clear his board um he is going into turn six helku has the ability as we've seen already to play cards very rapidly so like what was the mindset here fluff gigantic hand with a fair amount of combo power and i have a blocker negate in hand so i feel pretty safe in a lot of different ways. I I wouldn't have swung with the Mechikabora, but I needed a way to get that Kai on the field to clear his field. I would have much rather have left that Mechikabora open, but because he negated the leader swing, I was just kind of in a bad spot because I can't attack with the ball. And you can't wait to put the Kai on the table until his turn either because yeah. he can... Uh, order his turn in such a way that potentially you get no value of it at all. And Nick doesn't have a gigantic hand. I think his hand is like six or seven cards deep. But then he swings and he starts throwing on these super combos and I'm like, I think I'm dead here. With the ability to be able to, with both Android 18 and the leader swing, if I correctly, allows him to just manipulate the top few of his cards and put cards where he wants back on there so that way he is... He knows what he's going to draw into. He knows what he's getting. And just adding that double strike right then and there makes it a very hefty toll against you. You kind of look at your hand, I assume, kind of going, okay, can I? Oh, he's still going. Yeah. And if you yeah. make this play, you need to go all out. Yeah, and in my mind, I was, I was, was, it was two options. It was either I could go into his hand um, with this one swing to clear it out with the double strike and just fake him out and keep my energy or just say fuck it and go all in. And at this point, I was like, just fuck it, just go all in. <laughs> yeah. I think I can only go up to like 70, 75. He goes up to 90, I think. And, and actually looking at his hand now, even with Dragon Fist, if you were to have negated, he could have just tapped for Dragon Fist, used it to activate Battle, Spirit Boost, and then you couldn't even activate Blocker then. Well, if, he, if, if I had negated, he had Cooler in hand. That's true, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the lead the leader swing still would have gone through, and he wouldn't have needed Champa. Yeah. So I was dead there either way, and the reason that I was dead was because I took the double strike in the turn before when I should have defended against that. Yeah, maybe you play your Meki Kabora on four and just try and put up a wall. Yeah, that's probably what ends up being the more applicable play. So, with that being said, thank you all for tuning in on today's video. Keep in mind, there's buttons up and on the screen while Fluff does the outro. Yeah, uh, congratulations to Nick. It was a good game. Uh, he whipped my ass. As always, read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to, and Fluff out.